What's the word? Mm, tumultuous. Uh, I don't know. What's the definition of tumultuous? You know, I'll like, just say timeless, like, I guess. Ups and downs, like, I mean, it goes with what I was saying in like, the beginning. Just, like, exquisite. Like, that's my word. I think it's exquisite. Um, I want to say informative. It's not a very pretty word, but like lost, but not in a empowering. You can think of time probably exciting. I founded a bike shop in 2001 in Portland. There weren't a lot of women racing on the track and there weren't a lot of women racing road bikes. I started a shop team for my bike shop with the intent to just, I mean, our first kit said, Velo Shop support women in cycling on the side of the bid panel. I think it just kind of progressed pretty organically. And like, you know, you do that for 15 years and it just kind of kept growing and growing. And like, you know, at the end of the day, there's bike races and we're gonna go to them. And it can look a million different ways. You know, I'll tell riders, it doesn't matter if we have a million dollars or we have like $50. Like at the end of the day, it's six women. We're going to get in a van. We're going to drive to a bike race. We're going to race our bikes. And it, you know, like it's all the same. Once we tow the line, like everybody's in spandex and everybody's got pretty nice bikes now and we're going to race bikes. I had a big accident. I was racing motocross for 12 years and I crashed and almost got paralyzed and then people were like, hey, you should do uh, riding bikes for recovery. And I ended up being not bad at it. So I was like, oh, let's do that. And then here I am, 15 years later, still ride a bike. I was six years old, tiny like this, and I cried. And I asked my parents, I was like, I wanna race motocross. And I ended up racing with my dad for like 12 years. I don't think I really like riding bikes. That's what I say all the time. I like racing. But I never had the, the experience, you know, when people get into riding and they're like, oh, I really enjoy going with my family or friends and we just go and drive riding bikes. I never had the chance to. So I don't really know what it is to just enjoy riding bikes. So maybe when I will be retired, I will probably enjoy riding bikes. But right now I'm racing bikes. The thing that that keeps me coming back to racing and not just riding for fun is the people that I meet through it. Like I went to school on the East Coast, a school I really didn't like, and I had like a hard time relating to the other students there. And the friends that I made that I still see today were students from other schools who did collegiate races who I met through racing. I come from a racing family. Like my Dad was a professional cyclist. My grandfather was a professional cyclist. My uncle owns a bike shop. Like they all race, bring me to races. Like, so it's just kind of a thing that happened. I also don't think there's anything I love as much as racing. <laughs> like I wanna put as much as I can into it to see where it goes because I love it, not just because I wanna see if I can be good at it, but also because it I kind of want to see if I, how good I can be at it. I love to go fast, like real fast. Thrilling corners all day. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I've had the experience where there there have been times where I've showed up to a group ride, they're all guys, and they kind of look at you like, yeah, sure, you won't last long, and then you know, who's who's there at the end? Yeah, it's me. I don't know, it motivates me, like I love it. Like I love to show them, look, we can do this too. You know, I'm just a normal mom um, who loves to race a bike and look, I put in a lot of work and over a few years now I can race at big races and have a blast doing that too. These are my people, these are my friends, these are the, this is my community and you know, this is what I do to have fun. <laughs> I know why I do it, especially after being injured. I had more clarity about racing and that I wasn't done with, with it. I knew that there was more for me to gain and learn. I crashed pre-riding a cross race um, and broke my patella and like smashed it right in half, which is, turns out, one of the worst injuries you can have. Um, was pretty much couch ridden for three months, trying to be honest, like, I, I also know what it takes, the sacrifices. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to do it again. 
if I, you know, like not eating with cookies, like <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. Like, but also like not going out that extra night, you know, to have a glass of wine with a friend, you know, because I need to get to bed early because I have interval, you know, whatever it is. But I'm curious because I'll know, like I'm not worried, I'm curious. Like I know what it takes to get back to that level and physically, I, you know, like I said, I can do it, but I just, I don't know if like my heart and my, and like my mind will be there to, to make that. There's two words I can think of. Um, I want to say informative. It really did teach me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about just like the human body, my, you know, myself, my goals, all these different things. And the other word I thought of was transformative. I wouldn't have grown as much in, as a person and just like, you know, my emotional and physical health would not be where it is if I hadn't started cycling. I don't know, when I'm on a bicycle, I feel like time kind of stops in life. I feel like whenever I'm at my desk job or I'm like out with friends or something, it, I can't quite get that same feeling. I'm just kind of timeless on the bike and I just can't really feel that anywhere else. And it doesn't matter if it's like an easy ride or a hard ride or a race or where I'm somewhere new or somewhere I've been before. Um, just time just doesn't really exist. And I can't like get enough of that feeling. Rider 32 maintains her lead and we have two riders in the gap, two riders in a 15 second gap. <laughs> Is it a good move? Okay. Do you need anything? Pick it up a little bit, keep rolling it. They're starting to chase. They're starting to chase? They're starting to chase a little, but it's not very organized. Okay. You've got a minute and a half. Minute and a half. Minute and a half. Let me know if you need a bottle or food or anything. Keep it rolling. I think a lot of people kind of like to escape reality. And for me, that's like my escape. There's like all these things that happen in our lives. And some days we have good days or bad days. And no matter what, my bike is always there. And it's like always refreshing to be able to just go out and either forget about what happened or be excited about what happened during my day and either share that with people or just go alone and do my own thing and be in my own head and whatever is happening like the bike just helps me calm that space and just keep keep myself together. I've always been an individual sport type person and growing up you know as a swimmer I you know you swim you do your own race and it, you're a part of a team, but you're not in a team sport. And cycling's got that kind of individual side of it, so I can like resonate with that. But then you have a team aspect where your teammates can help you and help you learn and you race as a team and there's team tactics and you can win together as a team and celebrate as a team. And it's, it's got that perfect combination of both. I think cycling for me has had sort of two phases. I kind of had an obsession with running, an unhealthy obsession, and I got injured a lot, and then I started cycling, and I wasn't getting as injured, but I sort of carried over my obsession with exercise into it because I could go for four or five hours and just just completely work myself, and I don't know, I, I loved that. There's something that was addicting about that feeling to me of being absolutely worked to my limit. I kind of had to come to terms when I got to, I think maybe my junior, senior year, after like three years of racing, I was plateauing and had to come to terms with the fact that the way I was training was not smart, it was unhealthy. I was diagnosed with an eating disorder, struggled with that probably for longer than I care to admit. In order to go any further with the sport, I had to sort of pick like, do I want to take care of myself or do I want to just feed this? obsession that I have. Make sure to eat. Still got a lot of racing left. Eat food, drink. And I made a choice. I recovered from that. It was so painfully hard for me to ride my bike without being so minimalist about it and like only taking, you know, 
one gel for a four hour ride. <laughs> I was so used to just like squeezing every ounce of energy I could out of my body. Like that was just rewarding to me. It was like, it was a success for me to like ride the longest with the least amount of nutrition. Um, which is disgusting now that I say that today, but I was nervous that if I did sort of like recover from that, um, my old bad habits that I would leave the sport. I thought that that was what was holding me in it. Like this is why I do, this is why I ride my bike is because I have this crazy like need to just deplete myself. But I figured out that that's really like I could recover and just stay in the sport because I love it for the community and I love it for um, how like incredible of a sport it is. And that was my first year with Point S. That was huge for me. I was alone, on, I was the only girl on the cycling team in college for a while. Like there were no debriefing after races and talking meetings before races and going over the course, like none of that. I didn't have any of that. So my having my eyes open to the fact that like, wow, this is a team sport and these people are here to support me and I can support them in so many ways. And it's not, a, it's not selfish. Like I think it was very selfish for a while. Um, and realizing that there was a way to like contribute to a bigger goal was just really cool. Mm -hmm.